Hi everybody, it's Diego from Cortex and welcome to the 10th lesson of this Arduino course. Today we have a new component and it's this potentiometer. We're going to learn how it works and after that we're going to make game using a block 5 that will be controlled using this. So if you are ready, let's get started. A potentiometer is a variable resistance whose value can be controlled using this shaft, rotating it, okay? Besides, it has three pins. The middle pin has to be connected to the analog pin of the Arduino board and it will give us a value from 0 to 1023 and the other pins have to be connected to the 5 volts and the ground pin. So let's see on Tinkercad how it works. It's important to say a potentiometer is not included in the basic starter kit I told you about when we began the course. So you can either buy it separately or you can buy the Super Starter Kit, which includes a potentiometer as well as other components we're gonna be using in the following lessons. The circuit we're gonna make today on the physical board is very simple. We are basically going to take this potentiometer and as I've said, the middle pin has to go to one analog pin, for example, number zero, and the other pins, terminals one and two, have to go to the ground pin and the five volts. No matter where they are connected to. So now let's make this simple circuit on the physical board. As I said, this is a very simple circuit. We only need the USB cable, the Arduino board, breadboard, potentiometer and three jumpy wires. So let's place it. And one has to go to the five volts. The one in the middle to one analog pin, for example, zero. And the other one to the ground pin. And now let's open in block five to make the game. First of all, we're gonna quickly test how the potentiometer works. So let's remove Cody and add Arduino Uno. And we're gonna make a variable called resistance. And we'll make a very simple program working on live mode which will constantly give us the value of the resistance of the potentiometer. So we're going to set resistance to read analog pin O. I choose this number because this is the one the potentiometer is connected to. So let's plug it in, connect. So once this is connected, let's click on green flag. And now let's rotate this. As you see, as I rotate it to the left, it increases its resistance. It should reach a maximum of 1023. and to the right we reach zero. If we swap the five volts and the GND, now we get the maximum value turning right. Here we have 1023, and when we turn left, it decreases until it reaches the minimum. So we can use the program we have created here to make the game. So let's go to sprites, let's remove panda, and we're going to need a minimum of three sprites. One has to be a ball. We also need ground, we're gonna paint it. And 
and we also need a bar that we're going to move from one side to the other one. We're going to paint it as well. The ball is going to be constantly moving. When green flag clicked, well, first of all, when green flag clicked, we're going to place the ball over here. So if I place the ball here, as you see, it changes and the position where the ball is currently is negative 13, 104, which is good. So whenever we press on the green flag, the ball will go there, will point in a particular direction, for example, 45, and will show. Why show if it's already visible? Because when the ball touches the ground, we're going to hide it. So it's important to show it when green flag clicked. And now, forever, move. And this is a number you have to decide by trying. For example, maybe eight or seven steps could be reasonable. And as you see, it doesn't bounce. So what we need is if on it bounds. So that's done. Now we need some conditions and those conditions will be if the ball is touching the ground and if the ball is touching the bar. Let's begin with the bar. If the ball, we are here in the ball, if touching bar, it's important to give them a name previously. If that's in the bar, the ball has to bounce, but depending on the direction the ball is going, it has to bounce in one direction or another. For example, let's say the ball is going in this direction, 135. It has to bounce in this direction, the opposite, 45. So, if that's in bar, if direction equals, sorry, 135, pointing direction 45. And let's duplicate it. If it is going in this direction, so negative 135, it has to bounce in direction negative 45. And now we have to be able to control the bar by using the potentiometer. So, when green flag clicked, forever. Let's test the potentiometer one more time. And as you see, when we rotate to the right, the value is the maximum, and we rotate to the left, and now it is the minimum. So let's go to Sprite, to the, to the bar, sorry. And if resistance, if this variable is more than, let's say, greater than 700, we're going to move the bar to the right. That is, change X, X is the horizontal axis, by a positive number, for example, seven or eight but anyway this is a number you have to decide by trying the program however let's duplicate if resistance is less than for example 400 we're going to move it to the left and that is a negative number. And if the value is between 400 and 700, it will be still. So let's try. Now it's moving to the right because it is 1023. But if we decrease it, it moves to that side. And if we keep it between those values, it remains still.
So as you see, the game works perfectly. And two things we can do are these ones. First of all, if the ball is touching the ground, so let's go to the ball. If touching ground, well, that should be out here, outside, if touching bar, if touching ground, We're going to broadcast a message another sprite is going to receive to to let us know that we have lost. So let's broadcast game over. And we can create another sprite that pops up saying game over. So let's add another one. Let's paint. Let's take the text tool and write game over. So this print is going to be placed here. When green flag clicked, this pride has to be hidden. And when this pride receives game over, it has to show. To make it more interesting, well, it's tried before. Perfect, and we have to hide the ball. So the ball in this case has to hide. Let's see. Cool. And now we can animate this to make it a bit more attractive. So one idea is set size to the minimum and then change size slowly. So we're going to change size by 5 20 times. And 20 times 5 equals 100, which is the, the original size. And it could look like this. Finally, we can add some sounds. For example, when the ball is touching the bar, it could play a pop sound Let's see. Okay. When you're playing your computer, you will see it works faster than it does in my computer because you won't be recording your own screen and probably your laptop will be better than mine. And we can finally add a counter here using variables, which can be score. So at the beginning of the game, we're going to set score to zero. And whenever we touch the bar, we're going to change score by one. And this is going to be your task. You have to improve the code so that when score equals 10, there's another sprite that pops up saying victory. So you have to use the tool broadcast one message called, for example, victory or you win, something like that. Remember, you can hide the variable resistance because that shouldn't be there. And that's all, guys. I hope you liked this video. Improve the code as much as you want. You see, there are plenty of possibilities. And see you next time. Bye bye.